Let's start with the obvious. We exist in a materialistic society, surrounded by a constant influx of things, objects, devices, apparel, and so much more. It's easy to acquire a myriad of items over time, adding to our material possessions. Indeed, in this day and age where consumer culture is at its peak, accumulating stuff becomes second nature to us. We're driven by the need, or should I say the want, to buy and own more, to keep up with the latest trends and to indulge in the next big thing. It's almost as if our personal worth is measured by the amount of stuff we possess. Just think about it. How many of us have closets that are virtually exploding at the seams with clothes, some even with the price tag still intact, lying untouched, collecting dust? Clothes that were bought on a whim or during a sale, probably never to see the light of day again. And let's not forget the drawers. Drawers that are filled to the brim with old gadgets, random knickknacks, and items we once thought we couldn't live without. These are gadgets we haven't used in ages, forgotten in the chaos of our daily lives, shoved aside to make way for the shiny new replacements. How many of us are guilty of this hoarding behavior? How many of us can admit that we're drowning in material possessions, in stuff we've accumulated over the years and yet we never seem to have enough? Honestly, how many of us have closets bursting with clothes we don't wear, or drawers full of old gadgets we never use? Now here's a big one. Over the years, I found myself descending down a rabbit hole of endless scrolling and mindless interactions. Every the first thing I would do is reach out for my phone and jump into the virtual world of opinions, statuses, and random photos. I would check my social media accounts, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the likes, multiple times throughout the day. The brightly colored icons on my screen became the doorway to a world that offered an escape from reality. Every like I received like a shot of dopamine, every comment a spark of instant gratification, and every share a sense of validation. My virtual persona was thriving, but at the cost of my real-life relationships and commitments. I would spend hours crafting the perfect response, the wittiest tweet, the most aesthetic photo to share. I was constantly curating my online image, often oblivious to the reality around me. With each notification, I'd get a fleeting sense of feeling that I mattered in this vast digital universe. But not long after, I started to comprehend the reality of this illusion. It dawned upon me how much time and energy I was wasting on maintaining this digital facade. I was losing precious moments, surrendering my peace of mind, all for the sake of virtual validation. But soon, I realized how much time and energy I was wasting on it. We live in a culture that celebrates business. Our society admires individuals who are constantly on the go, those who fill their calendars to the brim with extensive to-do lists, appointments, meetings, engagements. Social media feeds are rife with individuals flaunting their busy schedules, bracing themselves to tackle an ever-growing list of tasks and errands. Being busy in today's world is often equated with being successful, productive, and competent. It's a sign of dedication, commitment, and ambition. We're frequently applauded for our ability to juggle multiple responsibilities the same time, as if it's a mark of our efficiency. This constant hustle and bustle, however, brings forth a considerable paradox. Despite its popularity and social acceptance, numerous studies indicate that the human brain is not designed to multitask. Our brains, structured to focus on at a time, struggle to toggle between tasks seamlessly. When we attempt to divide our attention among several tasks, we often undermine our capacity to perform each one effectively. Scientific research has consistently shown that our productivity tends to suffer when we try to do too many things at once. In fact, contrary to our collective societal belief that busyness is synonymous with productivity, research shows that when we try to do multiple things at once, our productivity decreases by as much as 40%. This is a huge one. It's a trait most of us harbor deep within ourselves, often going unnoticed, as if by magic, the desire for approval. It's a pattern of behavior that can be traced back to our earliest childhood memories, where we found pleasure in the smiles of our caregivers for every little achievement. We've carried this forward into our adult lives, with the actors changing but the act remaining the same. The approval we seek is not limited to our immediate circles. It extends beyond our family, friends, and colleagues. It's found in the nod of a stranger at a bar, the thumbs up from the barista who knows our regular coffee order, or the occasional passerby who appreciates our style. 
In this digital age, the quest for approval has taken another dimension, social media. We post our experiences, achievements, and even mundane moments hoping for likes and shares from known faces and unknown alike. The numbers give us a sense of validation and acceptance. The interesting thing is, most of us do this almost subconsciously, be it our parents, friends, boss, or even strangers on social media. Negativity can come in many forms. It can be negative thoughts that tend to cloud our minds. It could be negative people who introduce pessimism into our lives. Or it can come in the form of a negative environment that seeps into our lives unnoticed. It's an insidious force that has this uncanny ability to complicate our existence and the potential to rob us of our joy, our happiness, and our peace of mind. Ponder about this reality for a moment. Negativity is like a heavy cloud that overshadows everything good. It's this heavy feeling that you carry around, it's the cloud that follows you, ready to pour down any moment. When you are surrounded by a negativity, it's easy to get entangled in its web. You start reflecting the pessimism, you start overthinking even the simplest of things, and stressing over issues that wouldn't have bothered you otherwise. The world around you seems to lose its color and everything appears bleak. It's not just a minor inconvenience, it's a major emotional drain. It exhausts you, mentally and emotionally, leaving you feeling drained and powerless. Yet, surprisingly, it is often hard to recognize and even harder to get rid of. You find yourself trapped in a vicious cycle of negativity that is difficult to break free from. Being engulfed by this negative energy, it's easy to forget the beauty and positivity that life has to offer. But remember, while the negativity may feel pervasive and overwhelming, you always have the power to change your perspective and take control of your thoughts. Even though it feels like a daunting task, it's crucial to rise above the negativity and focus on the positive aspects of life. Because when you're surrounded by negativity, it's easy to get caught up in it. You start overthinking, stressing out, and feeling drained. We all have a history. These histories are an intricate tapestry of experiences, some beautiful, some not so much. They composed of unforgettable moments of joy, love, triumph, but also instances of sorrow, pain, and defeat. Each memory we carry with us has its own unique texture and weight, shaping us into who we are today. The past, with its multitude of experiences, is a part, it is a testament to our resilience, our ability to weather life's storms, and our capacity for joy. But remember, we are so much more than just our pasts. We are also our present selves and what we aspire to be in the future. Sometimes we get so caught up in the whirlpool of our past that we lose sight of the now. It's natural and in many ways very human to look back, to analyze, to reflect. But when our past becomes the lens which we view our present, it can hinder our progress. It can become an anchor, holding us back, grounding us in what was rather than what is. When we let our past dictate our present, it becomes a heavy burden. It's not the experiences themselves, but the emotions attached to them that weigh us down. Regret, guilt, bitterness, these emotions can overshadow the joy, love, and happiness in our present lives. So while it's essential to respect our past and the lessons it taught us, we must also learn to let go, to forgive, to heal. And sometimes holding on to the past can keep us from fully embracing the present. It's natural to reflect on the past, but when we dwell on it, it can become a heavy burden. It can fill our lives with regret, guilt, or bitterness. I've always been a bit of a perfectionist. As far back as I can remember, I have been meticulously attentive to detail. Whether it was acing every test in school, going above and beyond in my life, or constantly refining my hobbies until they met my soaring standards, there was always an underlying desire for everything to be just right. I lived my life in constant pursuit of this elusive standard of perfection, an ethereal goal that, no matter how hard I tried, seemed perpetually out of reach. This constant chase, this unwavering commitment to the ideal, did not lead to the perfect results I had envisioned. Instead, I found myself teetering on the precipice of stress. I was embroiled in a relentless cycle of exertion and exhaustion, pushing myself to achieve more, to do more, to be more. The constant strain began to take its toll, not just physically, but emotionally as well. I was perpetually on the brink of burnout, my energy reserves depleted. I grappled with feelings of inadequacy, the nagging sense that despite my best efforts, I was never quite good enough. But here's what I've learned. 
perfectionism doesn't lead to perfect results. It leads to stress, burnout, and never feeling good enough. We all have tasks that we do out of habit or because we think we should, but they don't really add any value to our lives. This phenomenon is known as busy work, and it's a significant complicator of life. Busy work is an umbrella term that encompasses a wide variety of activities. It could be something as seemingly trivial as a daily routine that has been followed for years without any substantial gain. Or it could be something more substantial like participating in meetings, which while may appear important in essence, are riddled with redundancy and inconsistency. These meetings often turn into long, drawn-out discussions that yield little to no actionable outcomes. Another example of busy work is getting tangled in endless email chains. Rather than facilitating communication, these chains end up consuming a considerable chunk of our productive time. They are often filled with unnecessary information and lead us to lose sight of the original purpose or goal. Then there are household chores, tasks that we are compelled to do out of necessity than any genuine need. While these chores are essential for maintaining a clean and organized living space, many of them could be easily delegated or automated. Piling up these tasks adds to the overall busy work, draining our energy and time, leaving us with less opportunity to engage in activities that truly enrich our lives. Busy work is indeed a major complicator in our life. It not only hampers our productivity, but also takes away from our precious time that could be used for more meaningful pursuits. Yet, it's a pitfall that we often unconsciously fall into. Staying aware and vigilant can help us avoid this trap and lead more fulfilling lives. Busy work can be anything from pointless meetings to endless email chains, or even household chores that could be easily delegated or automated. Change is a natural part of life. This simple yet profound truth echoes through our existence, a constant that paradoxically remains unchanging. The very essence of our universe is transformation. The shifting of seasons, the rise and fall of civilizations, the blossoming of a flower and its inevitable wilting. From the smallest microorganism to the vast cosmos, everything is in a perpetual state of flux. Yet, for many of us, this continuous evolution, this organic metamorphosis, can become a source of deep-seated anxiety. It's a paradox that we feel most comfortable in stability while living in a world that is constantly in motion. Often, our resistance to change stems from the fear of the unknown. We cling to the familiar, the predictable, the secure. We yearn for a static world, an unchanging environment, a haven that remains constant. But nature, in its infinite wisdom, knows better. The very process of evolution, the driving force of life, thrives on change. It's a dance of transformation, a cycle of birth, growth, death, and rebirth. We, as sentient beings, cannot escape this cosmic rhythm. Yet, there is comfort to be found in the chaos. For change is not a malevolent force, but a catalyst for growth. It pushes us out of our comfort zones, compelling us to evolve, adapt, and ultimately become the best versions of ourselves. It's a tool for self-improvement, a stepping stone towards becoming who we are meant to be. However, the human psyche is complex and contradictory. We are creatures of habit, and we tend to seek solace in the familiar. We like things the way they are. This fondness for the status quo, this longing for permanence in an impermanent world, is perhaps one of the most poignant aspects of the human condition. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, comment, and like this video. Also kick the notification bell so that more videos like this can find its way to you.